Hi, I'm David, and for this workshop, I want to talk about um, two recent projects on robustness. First, I want to talk about um, robustness against adversarial examples. Specifically, I'm uh, going to present confidence calibrated adversarial training, which allows to obtain robustness against various types of adversarial examples, even if unseen during training. And second, I want to talk about a very applied problem of robustness, namely robustness against bit errors in uh, quantized DNN weights. In the context of DNN accelerators, robustness against such bit errors um, can improve the energy efficiency significantly. So this first part on confidence calibrated result training is a joint work with Matthias Hein and Bernd Schiele. In this paper, we address the problem of robustness against adversarial examples. Uh, while adversarial training usually focuses on robustness against one specific type of adversarial examples, for example, L infinity ones, we also consider robustness against various other threat models. Training on adversarial examples can usually be formulated as a min max problem. Uh, here, the outer minimization problem learns the weights, and the inner maximization problem uh, computes adversarial examples. Uh, here, as highlighted in red, we consider L infinity adversarial examples. Um, overall, adversarial training tries to minimize the cross entropy on these adversarial examples, which means that we want to have high confidence predictions on adversarial examples. Uh, as can be seen, the model learns to predict the correct class in blue with uh, very high confidence within the L infinity ball, which is highlighted in red and is 0.03 on SVHN here. Uh, and this is visualized by plotting the confidence in the correct and the potential adversarial class along a specific direction in the input space. However, the obtained robustness does not generalize to larger L infinity perturbations, as shown here. Adversarial examples can easily be found right beyond uh, the epsilon ball um, and can also achieve very high confidence, as shown using the pink line. Similarly, training on L infinity adversarial examples does not generalize to other threat models. Here, this is shown for L2 adversarial examples. As before, high confidence adversarial examples can easily be found with comparably low L2 norm. Overall, by enforcing high confidence predictions on adversarial examples, adversarial training is unable to generalize robustness to uh, unseen threat models. And we think um, that this is because extrapolating high confidence predictions beyond the epsilon ball used during training is not meaningful. Instead, the model should somehow reduce its confidence uh, when entering regions of the input space that are unknown, including adversarial examples. Our confidence calibrated adversarial training um, encourages the model to yield low confidence predictions on adversarial examples within the epsilon ball during training. And this is illustrated here. The model um, quickly resorts to a completely uniform uh, prediction when perturbing the clean training example, which is shown at zero in the middle. And this behavior is extrapolated beyond the epsilon ball that is actually used during training. After training, robustness is then obtained by rejecting those low confidence adversarial examples. Um, on SVHN, for example, we chose a confidence threshold of 0.6, uh, and we are clearly able to reject the majority of adversarial examples, as shown in the uh, confidence histogram um, on the right. For the model to actually assign low confidence to adversarial examples, um, training can be summarized as follows. Uh, first, however, it's important to note that we train on both clean and adversarial um, examples. Um, then these adversarial examples are obtained by explicitly maximizing um, the confidence. Um, specifically, we maximize the confidence in any but the true label, which is marked in red here, uh, where F sub K denotes the predicted confidence in class K, and we take the maximum over all classes except for the true class Y. Uh, using the computer adversarial examples, we combine, uh, we compute a new target distribution as illustrated um, below. Uh, in particular, we consider a convex combination of a one hot distribution on the left side and a uniform distribution on the right side. Um, and thereby, we explicitly model how the model is supposed to transition between high confidence and low confidence. And as shown in the plot, um, the transition um, follows a power function. Um, as a result, the transition happens very quick, quickly and close to the clean training example. And at the border of the used epsilon ball, uh, an entirely uniform distribution is used. And this deep transition is important in order to bias the network towards extrapolating this uniform prediction beyond the epsilon ball. After training, robustness is obtained by uh, rejecting low confidence adversarial examples. And note that this is in very stark contrast to adversarial training. Usually, it's very easy to find adversarial examples against our confidence calibrated adversarial training, but it's hard to find high confidence ones. And as can be seen here, the network is able to approximate the chosen target distribution on the test set very well. The transition from one hot to uniform distribution uh, happens very quickly. Um, furthermore, the uniform distribution is extrapolated beyond the epsilon ball as intended. And as a result, even if the class label changes along this direction, the adversarial examples uh, can be rejected. Uh, and this way, we obtain robustness against uh, larger L infinity perturbations. 
Um, this also generalizes to other threat models. Here, this is shown for an um, L2 attack. However, I will also show results for L0 and L1 attack as well as at result phase. Uh, we also think that biasing the model towards low confidence predictions is uh, in unknown areas of the input space is a desirable goal in general. Uh, here, for example, uh, we show the confidence of the model along an interpolation between um, two test examples, a two on the left and a seven on the right. Um, and on the top, at result training uh, will always yield high confidence predictions. Um, and this is shown especially for the pink line in the middle, where at result training gives a very high confidence um, to this combination of a two and a seven. Our confidence can be predicted at result training on the bottom, in contrast, uh, results to uniform distribution as it is trained. Uh, and I think this is significantly more meaningful um, to assign low confidence in, on these examples that are kind of unknown and that clearly do not belong to the data distribution. So in summary, our confidence carry at adversarial training enforces uh, low confidence predictions on adversarial examples. And then in the second step, we are able to obtain robustness by rejecting these adversarial examples. Uh, and be, because this behavior is extrapolated beyond the epsilon values during training, robustness also generalizes to new threat models. Um, before presenting extra results, I briefly want to talk about a proper evaluation. Um, we all know the standard robust test error is usually computed as the fraction of test examples that are misclassified or can successfully be attacked. Um, so the robust test error also subsumes the clean test error. Uh, and as can be seen here, unfortunately, our model does not seem very robust. The robust test error is nearly 100%. However, if we look at the confidence histograms um, for adversarial examples, there's a significant difference. On the left for adversarial training, we will see that most adversarial examples receive high confidence, most of the successful adversarial examples plotted here. And on the right, however, our confidence carry at adversarial training assigns low confidence to most of the adversarial examples, so these could be rejected. And that's what we do. So we um, propose a confidence threshold with robust test error that takes that into account. Again, this is the fraction of either uh, misclassified test examples or successfully attacked um, examples, um, but additionally, they have to pass the confidence threshold. Um, and on the left, we can see that this confidence threshold robust test error also uh, benefits at result training. However, the improvement is, is rather small here, 1.3%. And this is in stark contrast to our confidence graded at result training, where more than 58% of the at result examples can be rejected. And as a result, um, uh, we outperform a regular at result training. And here I want to emphasize that this confidence threshold robust test error is completely comparable to the standard formulation in related work. So it remains to determine this confidence threshold. And obviously we want a confidence threshold independent of adversarial examples, and we want to reject as few clean test examples as possible, uh, because rejecting too many clean test examples is obviously unacceptable in applications. Um, so we decided to fix the confidence threshold at 99% true positive rate. And here true positives are the correctly um, classified clean test examples. So we want to reject at most 1% incorrectly, um, uh, correctly classified test examples. So on SVHN, we report the worst case confidence um, threshold at robust test error, uh, considering seven different white and black box attacks, which actually maximize the confidence in order to appropriately uh, attack our models. Um, and regarding the L-infinity adversarial examples used during training, uh, we slightly outperform adversarial training. However, this is not the main focus of our work. Instead, I will also show results for four unseen attacks. Here, these are larger L-infinity perturbations, L2, L1, and L0 adversarial examples. And all of these cases are very successful uh, against the regular adversarially trained model. Uh, L2 and L1 attack achieve nearly 100% robust test error. Um, our confidence carry at adversarial tra training, in contrast, generalizes robustness significantly better to these new threat models, reducing for L2, for example, 100% robust test error to roughly 30. These results are confirmed on Cypher 10. Here, our model performs slightly worse on the seen adversarial examples and on uh, large L infinity adversarial examples. However, on L2, L1, or L0 adversarial examples, we significantly outperform adversarial training um, so that the robustness generalizes to these threat models again. Uh, for L2, we reduce the robust test error from 100% to nearly 50%. Confidence carry at adversarial training also generalizes better to unconventional threat models. So for example, on the left column, we consider adversarial frames, where we also outperform uh, the baseline. Um, in the middle, we consider um, distal adversarial examples. These distal adversarial examples are computed to maximize the um, confidence on random noise images within a small epsilon ball, which we can perfectly reject uh, with our confidence carry at adversarial training. Um, and in the last column, we show that we also improve performance uh, on corrupted examples as shown on Cypher 10C. 
Finally, we found that confidence coefficient of result training also improves accuracy, um, especially on Cypher 10 on the right. The improvement is significant, both with rejection and without rejection. Uh, so with confidence thresholding and without. Um, especially with thresholding on the right, uh, we obtain a test error of 6.7%, which outperforms both normal training um, and adversarial training. So overall, I presented a new approach based on adversarial training to obtain robustness against various um, different threat models. And to this end, we train a model to uh, assign low confidence to adversarial examples. And by extrapolating this behavior beyond the epsilon ball used during training, we also obtain robustness um, um, against previously unseen attacks. Um, and additionally, we found that accuracy improves and we also test our model against various unconventional threat models. Um, so if you're interested in the work, um, check out the webpage or um, get in touch. So in the second part of the talk, I um, want to shift gears a bit. I want to talk about a very applied problem of robustness, specifically robustness of quantized DNN weights against bit errors. And in the context of DNN accelerators, this can be shown to uh, improve energy efficiency. And this is joint work with uh, Nandini Chantramurthy, as well as Matthias Hein and Bernd Schieber. So DNN accelerators usually feature a large portion of on-chip SRAM or on-chip uh, memory in general. And these are used as scratch pads in order to store weights and intermediate computations. And data access and movement usually makes up a very significant part of the energy consumption of those accelerators. So reducing the voltage of the memory of the SRAM in this case um, has become a very interesting direction in order to reduce energy consumption. Um, so as shown here, energy consumption per SRAM access on the right can be reduced significantly at lower voltages. Note that both axes here are normalized by Vmin, which is kind of the lowest measured voltage for error-free operation. Unfortunately, these SRAM arrays quickly become unreliable when reducing voltage. And this is illustrated here for two voltage settings. These maps show the bit error probability per bit cell for a small portion of the SRAM. And as you can see, the rate of bit errors um, increases very quickly when reducing the voltage. Yeah? And in practice, this will obviously direct, directly affect uh, DNN accuracy because the DNN weights are changed. So in fact, it can be shown that the bit error um, rate actually increases exponentially. Uh, this is shown in blue. Note that the left axis is uh, in log scale. And this means that the DNN has to endure um, exponentially increasing rates of bit errors uh, in order to reduce the voltage and the energy consumption. Uh, unfortunately, this results in a significant drop in accuracy. Um, in this plot, we show the robust test error for a specific um, bit error rate. Uh, the robust test error here is the test error um, computed after injecting bit errors in the weights. And note the change in axes. We have now on the x-axis the bit error rate in log scale, and on the y-axis the robust test error. Um, note that the robust test error increases very quickly, even for very small bit error rates um, for this 8-bit quantized uh, normally trained model on Cypher 10. Um, so we consider a very simple but realistic bit error model. We assume that bit errors are distributed uniformly across spatial locations. Uh, while in practice for a fixed chip and a fixed voltage, um, these locations are assumed fixed. Um, they can be assumed random across different chips. Um, also, these bit errors um, at higher voltages, uh, meaning uh, lower bit error rate, are usually a subset of those at lower voltages, meaning higher bit error rate, as shown uh, on the top here. Uh, based on this model, we propose a combination of three methods to improve robustness. First, a robust fixed point quantization then weight clipping during training as regularization, and finally training on random bit errors. And in contrast to related work, uh, our approach generalizes across chips and voltages, um, which allows to reduce energy consumption with um, little to no increase uh, in the test error. So compared to standard fixed point quantization, uh, we reduce quantization range and study the impact of implementation details. And we actually found that these implementation details are rather important to obtain robustness. And as a result, as you can see here in the brown curve, um, uh, the robustness is improved. Um, however, for uh, high bit error rates, um, robust test error still increases um, uh, quickly. Second, we use weight clipping um, during training. This means that during training, we constrain weights to a, um, a small interval using um, uh, projections. And we found that this regularizes the DNN to learn more redundant weights um, because the network has to use more weights in order to produce large logits, which will minimize the cross entropy loss. And this redundancy introduces robustness in the weights. And this is shown here in the blue curve, especially for high bit error rates, the uh, robust test error is decreased significantly. Finally, we combine weight clipping with random bit error training. Here we inject completely random bit errors during training to further improve robustness. Um, note that this comes at a slight cost of an increased clean test error, which is shown on the left at zero. 
Um, however, the robustness is improved significantly for hybrid error rates. So note that the increase in robust test error is, for example, here below 1% uh, for a bit error rate of 0.1%, roughly. Uh, and this marked in red, um, this already uh, enables a uh, reduction in the energy consumption um, of roughly 20%. And of course, uh, higher energy savings are possible with a slightly um, um, larger increase in, in the robust test error. In black, the lowest robust test error achievable for each bit error rate is shown. Uh, I note that for low bit error rates, robust quantization and clipping is enough. For high bit error rates, we need random bit error change. Um, and our approach also um, is applicable to low precision models here for a four bit model, uh, quantization, for example. And this allows to have the advantage of um, for a low precision quantization, which also saves energy, and low voltage operation, which um, um, further saves energy. So in conclusion, we consider a uniform bit error model that realistically captures low voltage operation. Uh, we propose robust quantization, weight clipping, and random bit error training to improve robustness. Uh, and we also, in the paper, for example, show that our approach is able to generalize to real profile bit errors, even if these bit errors deviate significantly from our model, as shown on the top right here, where the bit errors are strongly aligned along columns. Uh, you can find our paper on archive. And uh, again, get in touch or feel free to ask questions.